Hey all, Slanish Devotee here again. Today I am going to go through the cards of the Navita Prime Cycle. And uh, I'm going to tell you about what I think are my favourite cards. But first of all, uh, honourable mention to the Truck Wreck Launcher, uh, which was available in the Aligned Stars pack, I believe, the last pack to come out. Um, and I completely missed it off my review, um, as, as my bot reminded me. So, Truck Wreck Launcher is a one-cost support for the Orcs. It's not loyal, uh, but it is artillery. And it says, interrupt when a vehicle unit you control leaves play. Exhaust the support to deal one damage to an enemy non-warlord unit at the same planet. If the support was already exhausted, ready it instead. So the more smaller vehicles you have, the more the Wrecker Launcher is readying and pinging and readying and pinging as the enemy tries to wear you down. Um, I think that's fantastic. The Orcs were known for having really great force field technology, which allowed them to teleport really well, because they could move through the warp really safely. With, well, safely. It allowed them to teleport really well, because they could move through the warp relatively safely, because of their, their force fields. The um, Bubble Chucker is an artillery piece that throws a force field at things to wreck them. The Truck Wrecker Launcher would pick up wrecks and throw them. There's a thing called a lifter dropper, which literally just is a tractor beam that lifts up a, a vehicle and drops it from the sky. Um, the zap attack gun, the, the shock zap, zap attack gun that shoots snotlings inside the enemy uh, uses the same sort of technology. Um, so I love to see this. I think it really, really fits the, uh, the background of the orcs. I love it. And so I probably would have included in the included it in this video anyway because I think it's really really thematic but I forgot it and so I've included it now now let's have a look at the rest of the cards so for the orcs the cards that I really think stood out as being really impressive were runs to the front which is a very simple effect of uh, when you take a hit um, instead of taking the hit on whatever they want you to you throw a snotling into the way and that's just so perfect. Orcs, like, like the picture they found was perfect for it too. Throw an orc in, throw the snotling into the way of the gunfire, laugh, and go charging into the enemy. enemy. So thematic. So good. Uh, Corporal Snagbrat, I think, was quite a good choice. He's a soldier blood axe. I liked having a lot of soldiers in uh, this card pool for him, for the blood axes. I'm not 100% convinced that all of the soldier orcs uh, are thematically blood axe. They could have been any sort of things, especially the, uh, the, the, was it, the junk chucker could easily have been a looter or a freebooter or a, um, a bad moon, uh, which would have been just as thematic. Uh, but his ability to move deep strike, or well, not deep strike cards, cards in reserve around the battlefield uh, is really, really interesting. Um, and makes for some really interesting things, especially the adjacent planet without an enemy warlord, which means your commit can suddenly freeze out uh, where he can send those in reserve cards sometimes. So I think there's some neat options there. Sneaky Luton is also one of the best cards of the Orcs. Uh, it's old, it has to be a soldier, so it's basically a blood axe. Hits something and then runs away and nabs off with bits and pieces off it, uh, loots part of part of whatever it is, and they've got a great image of a Adeptus Mechanicus uh, spider tank thing that somehow some orcs have taken and rejigged into a looted vehicle. It's glorious, glorious stuff, really good. For Chaos, there were two units that I thought were really, really interesting that I really liked, the Neurotic Obliterator, with its very simple bonus for having attachments. The more weapons it has, the more charged up it gets. I think that fits in really nicely. And the ability to ping the enemy when they uh, attack it by exhausting weapons. I really like the idea of exhausting an attachment, even though the attachment itself might not have an ability to do with exhaustion. I think that sort of thing is really neat. Um, I do still think it probably feels more like a mutilator than an obliterator to me, but that's fine. The Champion of Corn is really cool as well. Three cost, no command, one attack, six hit points is a decent stat line. Slightly low, if anything, I think, probably. It has a bloodthirst reaction, as all the best corn units have bloodthirst, which is good, which 
bloodthirst is always triggered by a combat round in which one or more units have been destroyed. And in this case, the specialization gives the champion of corn brutal and immune to enemy events, which is quite thematic. Fits in with his collar of corn and the usual brutal sort of idea with his big six hit points, and that's all good. Um, but what I like about it is this forced reaction in particular, which kind of neutralizes itself out because you can move the champion of corn if you commit carefully. Um, or trigger battles in different places, or uh, the Kairu Aramaeus could make it move around. Um, after a battle at an adjacent planet, move this unit to that planet. So you have only limited control over where the Champion of Corn goes. He is going to charge into the battle, into the fight, when, whenever he can, which I think is just fantastic. Really good. Really love that. The Dark Eldar cards I had a few that I thought were quite good. The Catatonic Pain, I haven't used it yet. I don't think it quite fits into what I want to do with my Torch cards, with my Urien. But the idea of shifting a unit, controlling where they go, um, is quite neat. I think that's quite a, a neat idea. Simple, but, but effective. Really, actually, quite potentially quite strong. Um, especially if you throw it in with Calibration Error or something like that. Or uh, actually, could be an interesting one for Cougar to use and force people to run to planets where there are Nurglings. Liatha is a really different Warlord. I wasn't so sure because I felt like the, the whole face down, shielding, out of play cards thing seemed a bit... I don't know, more complex than I really expected from a Warlord ability. Um, but after playing it once or twice, in practice it was easier and, and more intuitive than it sort of seemed. And it was a fun, bluffing sort of idea, which was quite neat. And of course, I had to include it because of that fantastic um, uh, fluff quote at the bottom there. There is nothing so sweet as the fear and the expectation in their eyes when I step out of the shadow. I mean, that's just... That's just brilliant writing. Somebody brilliant and fantastic and wonderful came up with that. Supply Line Incursion, again, I think really fits into the theme of the Dark Elder really, 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 really nicely. Just a simple exhaust that support. And if you do hit something like an STC or something really important, I'm just going to replenish this card and make it effectively un completely zero cost. One card and one resource replenishes itself. Beautiful, beautiful design. I love that one. The Arrogant Hamanoculus. I haven't used this with Urien yet, but it's very, very interesting and tempting. It's tricky to use, though. Nice one cost, one command. That's nice. Um, could be a nice one for Dark Eldar to just throw into their decks, even if they don't have any torches. You know, just a simple one command uh, for one cost is, is pretty good. Increase the cost of any other Hamanoculus unit on this planet. Uh, which is a bit of a cost, uh, a limiting sort of cost on the card. Um, and this is a bit odd in other ways, like arrogance, I guess. I'm not sure what came first, the mechanic or the name. Uh, but the forced reaction, after you play a torture card, deal one damage to a target non warlord unit of this unit. By being a forced reaction, if you put it on a planet where they have lots of little things, you could play lots of torches and get rid of the little things and be pinging them constantly, or you could put it down the line on something close to the, the front line, sorry, where you can soften up a lot of stuff or get a, a damage through that you can then Clivex. But because it's a forced reaction, if you use this guy as just a command capper down the line and then play a torture, he will try to kill himself, which is a very tricky proposition. For the Eldar, there were two cards that I thought stood out. First was the Clash of Wings. Again, really simple effect, but really potent. Every mobile unit at this planet, and it has to be a planet with your Warlord, uh, gains flying. So suddenly, things like a Vashia Trailblazer, uh, Baharoth Hawks, Baharoth himself, Soaring Falcons, all these sorts of units suddenly become a lot hardier, which is a really nice effect. Just keeps It's just a really good... No, you're going to have to fight harder for this planet than you might have expected. So I think that's a really solid, simple, but good effect. Uh, the next one was the Flickering Hollow Suit. And oh, I love Harlequins. I love them so much. The Harlequins are so cool. Um, and this idea, 
uh, a one cost attachment, gain one hit point, it's probably not really worth it for that much. Uh, one hit point for one resource, I feel like two is probably more reasonable, or possibly even more than that. What do, what do they have? They have the um, the Imperial Guard have a plus three hit point card, don't they? And that's not really seeing play, so plus one hit point is not much. However, this interrupt, exhaust the attachment to prevent two damage, awesome. That's really good, but then if that if it's already been hit, you are ready the attachment and it can exhaust again, and so you can do a lot of damage mitigation that way, lots of small damage mitigation. Um, so I think that's a really neat effect. I like this idea of if it was already exhausted, ready it instead that they've used on the truck wreck launcher and the hollow suit. I think a couple of other cards in this cycle. I think that's quite a nice little effect. Um, Simple, intuitive, but makes the card just that much more useful. For the Imperial Guard, here are the cards that I really liked. Now, I know these are almost entirely designed pretty much to go with uh, Gorzod, but I think thematically they work really well. The Hydra Flak Tank, to shoot down aircraft, three cost, one command, two attack, three hit points, perfectly standard, no Wargary attachments, perfect. Double damage to enemy flying or mobile, perfect theme, perfect theme. And the extra little reaction after a unit moves to it from the planet, that's nice, it's a nice little extra something, so that if they don't have any flying or mobile units, the flak tank is going to be, be good, it can hit things coming in with the warlord, it can hit the warlord when the warlord commits to this planet, um, it can affect things like planum, which is nice. Um, and it's, it's just nice. The fact that that reaction does two damage to flying or mobile units also, it's very nice. The Siege Regiment Manticore. I actually uh, submitted some ideas to various fan sites. Uh, it's very, very similar to this idea, uh, but mine was a... Um, it was Space Marines, I think it was Iron Hands. Uh, it might have been Imperial Fists, but a Whirlwind was uh, what I thought would be suited, a very similar stat line to this. I think I actually gave it lower stats, but a similar sort of reaction. Um, so this is a four cost, quite big chunky tank, one command, three attack, four hit points, no warger attachments, those are all you know, fairly re reasonable. And the, the timing of the reaction was what I quite liked. After the ranged skirmish at an adjacent planet ends, so if you, you're fighting it on its own planet, it can't do this there. But if it's next door, it can shoot over at you. Exhaust the unit to deal three damage to a non-warlord unit at the planet. Which is just really, in fact, quite potent. Um, because three damage is a lot. It's quite a lot. If it had been two damage, or the stats had been lower and it had been a cheaper vehicle, that might have been more reasonable. Uh, but as it is, it's it's... Right, I love thematically shooting over the different battlefields is really good. The Seal of the Ebon Chalice. I don't know a lot about the Sisters of Battle, but um, what I really like about this is, again, that same theme, attached to an army unit, attaching it gets one hit point, same as the uh, Hollow Suit. But this interrupt, uh, Wint takes damage from a unit with higher printed cost deal that unit, damage equal to the difference. So penal legionnaires, all those one cost Imperial Guard units, um, getting hit by like Heldrakes, and the Heldrake has to take seven damage before its attack gets resolved. Um, a Bloodthirst would have to take nine damage before its attack would get resolved, all those sorts of things. I really like the seal as an example of sort of the faith of the Emperor, or a nice way of of bringing back down the effect of those big, huge elite units. Suddenly, they're a bit trickier. A possessed has to take a hit of four before its damage goes through. That might kill it, you know? Um, so I think it's that sort of... It was good, a really nicely thought out way to try and uh, bring back the, the appeal of using lower cost units. Um, one cost probably reasonable actually. I was just about to say maybe zero cost even, but one cost is probably right. For the Necrons, I really liked the Replicating Scarabs. Very simple. Uh, I would have liked them more if they had a command, but I think it's probably correct to not let them have a command. And 
exhaust to remove a damage. So if they're hurt, they can exhaust it from, they can remove it from themselves, and they can be put on different planets to help keep other things alive or to generate a little bit of resources for Luminor Zeros. And it's just a simple effect, thematic um, fix them up bug robot effect. It's good. I loved the ghost arc of Orokan. It's a unique, I don't know what Orokan is, I don't know if that's based on something else. I'm sorry for the quality of the card here, I don't think this is the correct card image, but it was all I could find on my computer. Uh, four cost, one command, two attack, five hit points, vehicle, so no war gear attachments, that's all good. When a Necron soldier or warrior you control at this planet is destroyed by an attack, put a target Necron soldier or warrior with lower printed cost from the discard pile exhausted at the same planet. Just the idea that you kill something and climbing off the ghost arc comes another soldier unit. If you kill that, climbing off the soldier comes a smaller go unit. You know, just layer after layer of these units. Um, and you could start with like a Lich Guard Sentinel or something, so a five cost Necron soldier, and then just then a four cost, then a three, then a two, then a one. Um, now, of course, in actual practice, people kill the ghost arc first, but I just, it's just such a neat idea. It's a really cool idea. The Space Marine cards that I particularly enjoyed were Aerial Deployment. Again, that's really, really simple effect, but that has a really strong, uh, interesting way of messing with the way the game works, and just giving you an extra turn after, at the end of the deployment after they're done. Great, jumping out of the Thunderhawks and getting in. The Machine Spirit, I think, is great. Again, it's an attachment that gives one hit point, um, but the ability to boost the effect of shield cards is nice, and probably not enough by itself, but that extra attack as well probably pushes it over into the, yeah, that's quite nice uh, sort of side of things. Hjorvath Cold Storm, uh, I think I mentioned in my review, the reason I love this is not so much the efficiency of the stats, um, or the slightly unusual um, trying to figure out the fluff of why the soldier gets worse when there's an enemy champion warlord on the planet, but what I just really love about him is the idea of bait for a warlord. Your warlord wants to come to this planet, and suddenly Ragnar finds it easier to choose uh, to commit to the same planet as a warlord. So I think that's a really nice bait mechanic. I think that's a really cool look, uh, thing to look at for the Space Wolf theme. For the Tau, it was all about the crew to this cycle. The things I really enjoyed seeing were consumed by the kindred. This one really got me right away. The crew eat things, and they eat each other, and they they gain abilities and 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 exp uh, DNA, and and they evolve based on what they've eaten. Oh, it's beautiful. And so here they are consuming something. So you exhaust your crew unit. It's doing the eating. Sacrifice a non-vehicle unit because they can't eat a vehicle and you gain those resources back. So uh, that fits into the Crute theme that they've had of the building of resources and using resources. It fits the background of the story because they're eating things. And it's just, I love it. I thought that was so cool. Behind Enemy, enemy Lines is a one-cost event. It was the signature event for their Warlord for this, this cycle. As a combat action, deploy, not put into play, but deploy a Crute unit at a planet exhaust a non-elite army unit. Just the idea of the crew jumping into the battle, uh, you're paying the cost, so it's effectively giving them ambush for a one cost, one card, but you're also getting to exhaust a non-elite enemy unit, which I think for one cost, one card, effectively, isn't too bad. I think it's it's fair, not too over the top, but I just think it's a really good theme of these gorilla, bird, alien beasts jumping out of the bushes and, and wrecking things. Similarly, the Trap Laying Hunter, which was 4 attack, 2 hit points, no command, as all crew should be. But uh, when you attack them, you have to decide if you either take 3 damage on your attacker, or exhaust a unit. And because it's an interrupt, if you exhaust the attacker, um, I'm not sure if the attack goes through. Um, limit once, so there's only one trap per combat round, but still the idea that they've set up traps and you have to get past them before you can hit them is really nice. I really like the uh, hunters, the trap hunters. For the Tyranids, the ones that stood out for me were the Strangleweb Termagant. 
a very simple one cost uh, command capper that they sorely needed and just the idea that you can cover the um, an enemy unit with strangle web barbed strangler strangle web living organism vine bug thing that traps them and they have to stay at this planet Mo mobility and movement between planets became a huge thing towards the end of the official FFG run of Conquest, and so I think it's quite reasonable to put in a few things to sort of mitigate that effect and bring it back, or make it less of a um, guaranteed success strategy. The other one that I, they got there were the Erupting Aberrants, which was a Gene Stealer cult unit, and of course, alongside the Harlequins, Gene Stealer cult is right up there. Uh, so these are pretty good stat line for the cost. Three for one command, three and four. Now, and they've got this interesting reaction. Somebody takes a planet. They can they bring in the planet. You can destroy a target army unit. That can be any army unit. It can be yours or the enemy's. It can be elite or non-elite. As long as it's an army unit, you can destroy it. And you put this unit at the planet. It doesn't have to be the planet that they captured, but just a planet where this army unit is. They... The gene stealers burst out and cause some damage as they come. But the thing is, if you destroy the enemy's army unit, they get the gene stealer cultists. If you destroy your own army unit, you get the gene stealer cultists. And then there's a, a bit of a penalty uh, for if they had attachments, because obviously that makes it better for you to kill that unit because they had the attachment. Um, so you have to pay an extra resource to sort of cover that cost. So, which is an interesting mechanic. I'm really keen to see what they do with the Gene Stealer Cult, um, with the Gene Stealer Cult Warlord. Um, but just Gene Stealer Cults, seeing them in Conquest is almost enough by itself. Love it. The neutral cards to wrap things up. I liked the idea of Counter Blow. Again, really simple. Your Warlord gets hit. So you cause a damage to the attacker. Just one might be enough to just finish something off before it's able to kill your Warlord, whatever. If your Warlord's exhausted, draw a card. I love that it gives you just a little bit of incentive to put your your Warlord into a bit of harm's way. You know, you're going to be able to ping them back, and you're going to be able to draw a card. And the other card that I quite liked was Calibration Error. As I said, uh, movement was a big deal, and I think this is a really nice... Uh, way to sort of deal with it and I, I just love the idea of like a big thing flying along through the air and then having it crash to the ground and smash through uh, its own lines you know I think that's a brilliant mental image and I think the reaction of it's a, a little bit wordy a little bit complex but it's again it's one of those ones where once you pass through and figure it out it's actually quite um, intuitive. They hit the ground, and the, your opponent has to deal their attack value amongst their units of the planet. You know, uh, yeah, it actually works quite simply. So those were the what I considered the highlights of the Navita Prime APOCA cycle. Um, I'd love for you to leave some comments saying, you know, what were your favourite cards? What are the cards you've found the most interesting or the most useful? Um... And what would you like to see coming up from their next projects? Thanks very much. Hope you enjoyed. Catch you next time.